Okay, so the pan frying of a steak inside, you don't have a braai or you can't get out or whatever because it's raining or whatever the case may be. Um, there's a, there's a, a really nice way to, to fry a steak inside, uh, inside the house or pan fry, let's say. Okay, however, it doesn't matter how good your cooking techniques and your skills are, if your butcher or your local supermarket lets you down with the quality of meat, there's not a hell of a lot that I can do to, to help you. So I can show you a couple of things. However, I think one of the things that we've lost over the years is the is that relationship with our butcher. And I think if you have if you still have that relationship and if you still have a good butcher that you can trust, and that's always the big thing is the butcher that you can trust. Um, you know that half the battle is is won, probably more than half the battle. So um, you know when you're buying meat off a shelf, it's very difficult to say you know that's a good cut or that's not a good cut unless you're buying fillet because then. You know, then you pretty much guaranteed something that's going to be relatively tender, but also the flavor. You know, you start need to start putting heavy sauces with it. And for me, when I eat my steak, I, I like my meat sort of um, as as untouched as possible. So a bit of butter, a bit of salt, and uh, and I'm happy. So a couple of things when you are pan frying a steak at home, we are going to be doing it with a little bit of ribeye. So what do you need? What do we need? We need a good piece of ribeye. All right. Beautiful marbling, lovely marbling. Okay, we need a bit of olive oil, we need a bit of butter. The olive oil in the pan helps the butter from burning too quickly. So that sort of slows the whole process down, but you can get it up to temperature. I've got some thyme, a little bit of rosemary, and I've got a clove of garlic. Get the tongue. And what's very important here, is I've got a pan, and it's a heavy based pan. Thanks, Jamie. It's a, is it Jamie? Yeah, it is too. It's a heavy base pan, um, so that when you put the the meat into the pan, you don't want it to, to to lose all its heat. If it's a thin pan, what happens is the meat just uh, the the temperature just disappears, and and it essentially starts starts boiling in 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 a way. So we don't want that to happen. So a heavy base pan, and what I've also done is I put the oven onto about 200. Okay, because I'm actually going to put the the pan into the oven. Uh, to cook it even further, so I don't have to worry about it too much on top of the stove. I like my meat sort of medium rare to medium, medium rare to medium, as long as it's got a bit of marbling on it, so then it's, that fat melts. If you've got this lovely marbling and you only cook it rare or medium rare, um, what tends to happen is you don't benefit fully from that flavor of the meat. There's a bit of useless information for you, eh? All right, also the pan has a metal handle so that it can go into the oven. Please do not, please do not, there we are, slippers and boy. Um, please do not put the pan in the oven with a plastic handle. That's not going to be great. All right, so we're just going to put that over there. All right. Excellent. Pan. Olive oil. We're just going to heat that olive oil up nicely. And what the butter does as well, it caramelizes slightly and it also then helps caramelize the meat, that beautiful, beautiful flavor of the meat. Now, we are not searing the meat, sorry, we are not sealing in the flavors of the meat by, by searing it on both sides. Okay, what we're doing, that really hot temperature that goes in, firstly, creates a lot of smoke, and that's what gives it that characteristic pan-fried flavor. Okay, not sealing in the flavor, it sears it, that smoke gives it that lack of flavor. The next thing that happens is that um, it, it goes that beautiful golden brown color, so it makes it look in interesting. All right, that's why we pan fry things and that's why we sear things. Okay, not to keep in the flavor and not to keep in the juices. Okay, the flavor is there, the juices are there. If you dip a piece of meat into 30 degree water, all right, you'll see that it will coagulate, the proteins start coagulating. Okay, not sealing in air. Okay, let's get that out of the way. All right, so into the pan, we're going to put the butter. You'll see that starts bubbling straight away. And into that butter, we're just going to add our herbs. Okay, and our garlic, all right, which we are going to crush. So you can actually just do it with your hand. Just crush it up like that, okay, and throw that into the pan as well. And then move all of that around. Look at that. You must smell what is going on here now. Just smell it. Sorry, it's a bit rough there. Absolutely delicious. All right, now into this pan, we are now going to put 
our meat. Yeah? Alright, into the pan. And we are going to season. Just putting a little bit of salt on there. I'm not going to put any black pepper on. So I want black pepper on it. You're welcome to put black pepper on. Beautiful. I don't have all my equipment here, so I'm using my bright tongue. Okay. What you want to do, just shake that around a little bit. Don't baste it just yet. Just shake it around. Get a nice color on there, yeah? Every now and again, just check it. We just want nice color on there before we turn it over. We want to get a bit of nice color on there before we, before we turn that over. And then season the other side. The butter is browning now. Burn noisette. All this French terminology. Beautiful. And remember what we're going to do now, and especially because this meat's got so much marbling on it, we're going to sear it on both sides, okay? give it a bit of color, give it a nice smoky flavor, and then we're going to put it in the oven and we're going to cook it a minute on each side at least, probably two minutes on each side. It's a nice thin piece, so it doesn't need too much more than that. And, uh, and then we're going to let it rest. Very important to let it rest. Why do we let it rest? I mean, essentially what you do is if the meat comes out of the oven or it comes out of the pan and you're cutting it, especially when it's medium, and you're cutting it straight away, what you get is that, that blood that runs out of it. When it rests a little bit, it, it retains that blood and it retains that moisture. Sometimes you cook it uh, medium and you slice it straight away and it looks like it's overcooked medium well. And, uh, and that's the, the issue that you have. Okay, so let's just take it. Look at that. See that beautiful color? We turn that over in the pan. Goodness. What? Goodness. Christa. Salt. Good luck, boys. Okay. Oh. The cooking degrees of meat is also a massive contentious issue. Like, how do we check whether the meat is medium, medium rare, and everything else? The best way to do it at home, essentially, is a thermometer, you know. 50, 50 to 55 degrees is where you want to sort of be. Um, but, you know, you can do the little pressure test on your, on this little muscle here. You can squeeze, the harder you squeeze it, the more well done it is. So it starts off rare and jelly-like. As you push your thumb into your pointing finger, it, uh, it gets firmer and firmer and then until it's well done. And it works to a certain degree, but yeah, it's, uh, it's not really that, that accurate. Look at that, beautiful, beautiful flavor. Okay, I'm just going to turn it over again. You can, just, you can just see. Lovely. All right, now. Just a bit of basting. We're just putting that beautiful butter all over the meat again. Can you see that? I'll try and do that over here while you're watching. Yeah, let me try to do that. Alright, let's, let's have a look here. So, you're just spooning that butter sort of over that meat. Okay, and it's just ridiculous. Alright, and then that goes into the oven. Okay, nice and hot. And we're literally going to leave it in there for about a, a minute on, on each side. So once you've done that, um, it needs to come out and it needs to rest. Now, people often ask, sort of, how do you rest it? It's going to get cold and everything else. Turn your oven right off. You can actually even switch the oven off, leave the door open, put it onto the plate that you're going to serve it on, and then just leave it there. It'll be, uh, it'll be absolutely fine. It's not going to overcook. But it's important that you rest it. So, uh, you know, you don't want to buy an expensive piece of meat and then, uh, and then not rest it. Okay, just for the purpose of hurrying this up, don't burn your fingers. Okay, turn that over. Let's put it in a golden brown color. Put that back in there. And then we're going to take that out in a minute. Rest it. Yeah. Perfect.
Okay, and there you go. You go. Beautiful. Then, onto the plate. There's the herbs, and then this, these juices that it's been. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. And there you have it, the ribeye. Beautifully cooked. Obviously guys, I haven't rested it now, the videos take too long and it's just, uh, unfortunately it gets a little bit complicated. But just follow, just listen to what I said and follow, um, follow the instructions, I'll, I'll type it in the little piece underneath as well. Enjoy, send us the photographs of the steaks. My mouth is watering. Hey everybody, uh, thanks for watching the, watching the video. You might wonder what we are doing on YouTube and why have we, we got this channel and as you see, um, all of this happened during lockdown. Uh, COVID-19 is where this, uh, this YouTube, channel, YouTube channel started. And, and one of the big things for me was to, uh, during this, this lockdown period, and especially being in the hospitality industry and owning a restaurant, was to be able to look after my team and my staff. And uh, basically we, we, um, we have taken my book, Mile 8, and uh, all the sales and all the proceeds to the book are from the book um, go to our, our staff fund, which is, which is pretty special. So you can go to the Marble, uh, Marble website and you can purchase your book there. Um, and I think that's just really where, where we are with this channel as well. I think whatever money is raised from this channel, um, obviously we, will, uh, we need to cover for, for production costs and, and, uh, and so forth of the, of the channel itself. But the uh, uh, majority of the proceeds will also then go to a fund. And that fund is going to be ongoing for uh for yeah it'll be ongoing after COVID and everything else because i think one of the biggest things that we realize is how vulnerable um, ourselves and our staff become in in situations like this so thanks so much for watching really appreciate it <laughs> tune in for the next one cheers guys